and thanks for joining us as we come into our final half hour of this primary election night coverage. We're going to try and wrap up as much as we can as we know the votes are still going to be coming in even after tonight, but we're going to try and give you a clear picture as where things stand right now with uh, the elections. Let's start with the race for president and uh, it's been called in both categories as it has in all the other uh, Super Tuesday primary states. Uh, Democrat pres Democratic president, I should say, um, got a commanding lead, 90% there. California has 100, uh, 495 delegates at stake, so that is a quarter of the number that he needs in order to pick up the nomination on the Democratic side. Let's check in now with the Republicans. President Trump also with a strong lead, 76% to Nikki Haley's 20%. Uh, on the Republican side, 50 plus one gets all the delegates, so that's 169 that Trump picks up here in California. And the top two vote getters in the U.S. Senate race tonight, Adam Schiff and Steve Garvey, they will move on to the general election. Katie Porter and Barbara Lee, uh, both of the progressive Democrats in this race falling short. So uh, it was an interesting night as uh, Adam Schiff uh, decided to take to the stage uh, for what was going to be a victory speech. Yeah, I saw a protest right at his own campaign party. Let's check in with Andrea Flores, who is at that site of the party in Los Angeles. And yeah, it was pretty chaotic for a while. It was very chaotic. I, I feel like it's it's really been uh, a roller coaster of emotions. If you were here tonight in Hollywood at the Avalon, right off of the, the Hollywood Walk of Fame, it started off uh, with such an upbeat mood, upbeat tone, and then things quickly took a turn uh, during uh, Congressman Schiff's comments here uh, as he was thanking his supporters. Uh, of course, those remarks were disrupted by protesters here calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, and they were uh, very very outspoken against the war between Israel and Hamas. And that took place really just right here, just steps away from where we are right now. It was down in the thick of where all the supporters were standing. And uh, really, it seemed like a lot of those uh, uh, protesters infiltrated uh, seemingly a group of supporters here and really turned the night upside down. Things are quieting down now. Of course, crews are here breaking down and most of the supporters have since left. But I do want to mention, if we take a look here at the balcony, uh, uh, Schiff did make a return here. This was a, an area that was kind of a more VIP all access area that we did not have access to, uh, but it, it does look like he had a, a moment to thank some, some close supporters there. So did make a quick return and then exited. We were not able to get any one-on-one -on -one sound with Congressman Schiff today. But again, we wanna show you uh, this moment when that disruption broke out. So you had a chance, you had a chance to meet my wonderful wife Eve. And again, this is just a video of when that disruption took place. I think taking a lot of people by surprise, uh, a very calm atmosphere turned into chaos very quickly. A lot of heated exchange between Schiff supporters and protesters here. But here's what he had to say in the remarks that he was able to get out. My great gratitude to all of my wonderful supporters. I want to acknowledge the right of our protesters and I look forward to working with you all and onward to victory in November. Thank you very much, everybody. And again, we want to mention one of the people who was on stage with Congressman Schiff tonight was former L.A. Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa, has been very involved in the L.A. community and in, in California politics as a whole and at, even at the, uh, the national level. And we asked what he thought about what happened uh, between the protesters here and the supporters earlier tonight. Issues of life and death. They're important issues, but, you know, you, if we want people to listen to us, stop screaming. 
So again, words from former LA Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa. And uh, again, as, the, as things start to wrap up here, I think the biggest thing and the thing that we heard from voters earlier today when we were at a voting center in Glendale, which is uh, Congressman Schiff's district, the 30th Congressional District, is that voters are really going into the elections wanting to know where candidates stand uh, on the war between Israel and, and Hamas. And some of them said that will drive their decision. That's going to drive who they vote for. So it'll be interesting to see how voters take that information and, and the information that candidates are putting out, their stance about the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas, and, and how that will influence uh, the next few months and as we head into November. We'll send it back to you, live from Hollywood. All right, Andrea, thank you. We should point out both of those candidates were pretty clear on the record that they support Israel's right to defend itself, and both were, you know, uh, took strong positions on that. Well, to that I'm point. I'm talking about Steve Garvey and Adam Schiff. And we're going to go to the Steve Garvey uh, headquarters right now, where Michelle Bandor was earlier today, as Steve Garvey uh, also gave uh, his victory speech in Palm Desert. Steve Garvey and his supporters have gone home with a victory under their belt, thanking California voters for bringing Steve Garvey to the November general election as the Republican in this race for the U.S. Senate seat. He used a lot of baseball jargon here tonight, saying he is as excited as he was in September of 69 when he first put on that Dodgers uniform got up into the batter box and looked around saying that this is what hard work and dedication looks like. And he says that's what he has in store for the next few months, putting his hard work and dedication to win that Senate seat. Well, know this, it ain't over till it's over. We've got to the starting line. And that quote you all know is true in baseball and it's true in politics. And my opponent has been advertising that he, he wants me. And he's mistaking kindness for weakness. <laughs> Remember that old saying, be careful what you ask for? <laughs> well, he's like the pitcher that throws me 70 mile an hour fastballs. <laughs> and then watches me run around the bases. I can't thank you enough, all of you here tonight, throughout California and throughout this great country. Garvey said he could have easily just enjoyed his retirement, enjoyed his life with his family, but he said about seven months ago he woke up and turned on the news and said he watched an imploding Washington and politicians who were failing the voters, so he said he had to do something about that. Reporting from Palm Desert, Michelle Bandour, KCRA 3 News. And as we're covering this Senate election, we also want to go to Lizze Mitri, who has been covering the Katie Porter campaign, the end of that Congresswoman's career for now. That party was in Long Beach. Things cleared out here at the bungalow in Long Beach where Congresswoman Katie Porter was supposed to have that election party. Obviously a little bit disappointing for her tonight. You can see the stage that's being dismantled right now where Congresswoman Porter spoke. She said, we know we will come up short. And she really seemed to be attributing that to the advertising against her and those ads that were elevating the Republican front runner against her, Garvey. So she said basically the opponents threw every playbook at us that they could to try to knock us off our feet. But she said, I'm still standing in high heels. Take a listen. So the most important thing I want to say tonight is thank you. Because of you, we had the establishment running scared. Yeah. We're standing Woo! three to one in TV spending and an onslaught of billionaires who spent millions peddling lies and our opponent spending more to boost the Republican than promoting his own campaign. I want to thank each and every one of you, really, each and every one of you, for the support that you have shown me in this campaign and over the years. And we did try to speak with her after that concession speech, but she kind of made her way from the stage, talked to her supporters, she took pictures, she gave hugs. We were told she would speak to those supporters first, and then she was quickly ushered out, and we were told she was done for the night. Reporting here in Long Beach, Lizay Mitri, KCRA 3 News. You know, as we're looking at this big transition period mm -hmm. with California's two U.S. senators, 
until recently, for decades, mm -hmm. we had two women who were elected in what was called the Year of the Woman. We have Barbara right. Boxer and Diane Feinstein, powerhouse. Um, now we have Alex Padilla mm -hmm. in now the senior uh, senator position, and two men advancing to November. So that's a big change for our it state. It is a different dynamic. Yes, yes it is. Sort of a, a trend that we're seeing. It's sort of the Year of the Man here in California. I mean, not only there in Congress, but also right here at home. We have the governor, who is a man, the leader of the state assembly, who is now a man the leader of the state Senate who is now a man so uh, just it must be the year of the man okay <laughs> it's about time it's about time it's just, I guess. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything um, no but just for just your thoughts on I mean just seeing what we have now set up for the Senate race I mean it was I think the you know biggest most interesting thing tonight was that this could have been a real victory moment for Adam Schiff you know he's looking ahead cruising to November right. and what could have been this very sweet moment for him was obviously kind of trampled on by this political controversy. I think it speaks to how impassioned and contentious this political moment is around the issue of the war in Gaza, and he's going to have to probably address that on the campaign trail for months to come. Definitely, but you look at that issue for these two particular candidates, and that's one thing they actually have in common. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think there's very few candidates out there right now who are calling for ceasefire, and that's probably why you're seeing protesters getting more and more aggressive about their tactics, trying to catch people's attention, trying to get their message through, because despite months and months of war, people like Adam Schiff have not really shifted their position at all. Okay, thanks, Alexi. All right, well, in addition to California, of course, more than a dozen states holding elections today in what we now call Super Tuesday, with nearly a third of all possible delegates up for grabs. Of course, a major night when it comes to the White House. So let's go to Ty right now. He's got the wins and losses. Yep, pres both President Biden and former President Donald Trump now have more than half the delegates needed to win their party's nomination. Donald Trump is projected to win California, as well as Alabama, Arkansas, Colorado, Massachusetts, Maine, Minnesota, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia. But it was not a clean sweep. Nikki Haley is projected to win the Vermont primary she won just more than half the votes in Vermont, which is an open primary. That means independents and Democrats are allowed to vote in the primary along with Republicans. So here's a look at the updated Republican delegate count. Former President Donald Trump now has nearly 1,000 delegates. He's more than halfway to winning the party's nomination. Haley has 92. In the Democratic Party, President Biden is winning with every state holding elections today, including California. But the president lost the Democratic caucus in American Samoa with less than 100 people voting there. Businessman Jason Palmer was declared the winner, gaining six delegates. So even with the loss, the president now has more than 1,500 delegates, just a few hundred delegates away from that magic number, 1,968. President Biden did not attend any political events tonight. Instead, his office says he was preparing to deliver his third State of the Nation address. That will take place on Thursday. Edie Golson, back to you.